Hey everybody, welcome back to DIY Boom Boxes in Texas. My name is Phil, your host. And I don't have any projects done this week. I'm actually working on a project right now that I'm going to show you guys what to do and how to do it. I got a question on my Facebook page, which is I Love All Things Radio. It's actually my Facebook group. And the question was about hole saws. So I wanted to show you guys the different hole saws that I use for making the holes in my projects and a hole saw is a great great tool now you can use a jigsaw and I actually have a very nice jigsaw right here and a jigsaw works good for making odd shaped holes I used to use it to do my circles and there's, again there's nothing wrong with using a jigsaw it works really well but a hole saw is just so much faster and again, I prefer the Porter Cable brand myself. That's just what I like to use because they all take the same size battery. I actually bought this one without a battery. You can buy them what they call uh, bare or, or naked, sometimes they call them, but it comes without a battery, so they're a lot cheaper because all the ones that come to my, my drills also have the same 20 volt lithium battery. And I have four of these batteries. So, anyway, that's my. Jigsaw. The jigsaw, I still use it. Let me show you here real quick. I, uh, now this is not the cleanest hole I've ever done. I had a little bit of problems with it. But I used it to cut this hole out right here for the FM uh, transmit that's going in here. And I'll show you guys a little tip. Uh, take your piece of cardboard and make your little template like that to trace around. And that way you'll get the uh, perfect size hole that you need. What we're going to do this box here. As you can see, we're going to put a couple of holes right here in the top, and we're going to be using this hole saw right here. And what these holes are going to be for is for the voltmeter and the USB port. And this one here is an inch and a quarter inch hole. And the other ones we're going to do is we're going to do the speakers. Now, what I went ahead and did is the arbor that I use art uses a quarter inch bit, and instead of trying to start it with the bit, I go ahead and drill the hole out so it's already a perfect fit and it goes straight to the hole saw like that. So I go ahead and pre-drill my holes like that. I haven't pre-drilled the holes for the switches yet. I need to do that in just a minute. And I was going to show you guys how I do that. So anyway, I like to use a DeWalt um, for these two particular holes that I drill. And the reason being is because, let me show you here, the most expensive part or one of the most expensive parts is what's called the arbor, which is this piece right here that actually holds the hole saw itself. And the cool thing is this particular DeWalt arbor will fit different sizes. And it'll fit this one here, which this is a, for you guys doing four inch speakers, this is a three and three quarters for the four inch speakers. This is an inch and a quarter. And I've even got a big one here that I use. And this one here, the big one here, it's still got sawdust in it. This is a five and a half, and this is what you need if you're going to do the six and, a half, six and a half inch speakers. You need a five and a half inch hole. And that's what this one here does. See, this, this one's got cooler debris in it because I don't really use this to drill out my coolers. So it's still razor sharp. Now you're not going to get a lot of holes out of them. You'll probably get about, if you're still drilling steel like I am, I figured you're going to get about 20 holes, maybe 25 holes out of it before it wears out. you got to replace it, which is not too bad. These are about $22 to replace, so you're looking at about a dollar a hole to drill your holes. Now, there are different ones you can get that are more expensive or different designs. You can get them, They come from China, take about 30 days. These take about two or three days to come in from Amazon. That's just the cost of doing business. So... Works really, really good. So we're going to go ahead and do our speaker holes first. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on here. The nice thing is just pull down the little level, level, level levers there. And you screw it down, line up the hole that locks into place. Just like that. And again, get your really nice quarter inch bit. And these work really, really good for making all your starter holes. Now, for the holes for my switches... I actually use this one right here. Now this one here is a 13 16th size and it's for the little light up LED switches that you see me use. 
all the time. And this one here makes a perfect hole. And again, it's got a quarter inch bit. Now this one's a Linux. Uh, the reason I went with the Linux, I've been going through these before, and it, ha it came with its own arbor order together, but you can replace just the bit here because this arbor here is obviously too big for this bit here. So I go ahead and just use the Linux. I think this is about five or six dollars for the whole saw. I think it's 13 if you buy it with the arbor itself. Again, once you have the arbor, if you go ahead and pre-drill your holes, the, the, uh, the bit itself will last forever. So that's the whole thing. Now, let me show you what we're going to do here. Um, one thing I like to do is even though you're working on a nice plastic table like this, sometimes you can get metal bits and shavings on here. It can actually scratch your project. So this is a piece of um, carpet padding that I actually got from a carpet place down the street. They've got a big dumpster behind the place where they throw away all their old carpet, old carpet padding they rip up from their houses. Or if they have extra, this is a really nice padding. It's not that funky looking multicolor stuff you've seen back in the old days. This is actually a higher quality. And I, I put my project on here, especially if I don't want to get it scratched. And the other thing I do to keep my project from getting scratched is I went ahead and covered it in tape. Now the reason I did that and the reason the top is not covered is the top is going to be painted. So I've already taken the top and I've already hit it with my scotch bright pad and got it all surface all scuffed up ready for paint. But I would like to keep the bottom black. So to keep me from having to repaint it black if I get a scratch on it, I go ahead and protect it with the painter's tape while I'm doing on my, drilling on my holes. Now the way I got the side of this, the centerpiece for my hole is what I did, I took my hole saw and I went ahead and cut a piece out of plastic. You can use cardboard. This is a scrap piece I've had for my plastic projects. And you go ahead and take your speaker grill and go ahead and outline it. Then you go ahead and set this on here and you try to get it as even as possible all the way around. And once you do that, go ahead and mark that spot right there and that's your center hole. And you can go ahead and drill your hole for your hole saw. And it works out really perfect. And again, I know some, some guys are thinking, okay, this is old hat. But again, there's some guys out there that are doing their first project. They've never used the hole saw before. They work really, really good. Now, if you're going to use the DeWalt, uh, you don't have to go to the DeWalt. Like I said, I have a Linux here. Now, this Linux I, I bought with the Arbor. I believe I bought this from Home uh, Lowe's. I think it was thirty-five dollars. Now this one here is a. Let me find the size on here. This is a four and a half, and this size here is what you would use for five and a quarter inch speakers. And I got some new projects coming up for some five and a quarter inch speakers. Again, it's got the same quarter inch bit inside there, and these work really well. You can see they have a very small chuck on there, I mean um, Arbor, so you could use it for on a 3 inch drill. I really wouldn't recommend using a hole saw on a 3 inch drill unless you really have one. I don't think they have as much power as a half inch drill, but it will work. If you're drilling plastic, I think you can get away with it. If you're drilling metal, you really need to go with a heavy duty half inch drill. I've actually got two of these Porter Cable units. The reason I have two is I go back and forth so I don't wear one of them out with all the holes that I'm drilling, so I'll use one for the holes. I use the other one for dropping screws. The next project, I'll actually switch them. Then the other one will do drilling holes. The other one will drive screws. So you can see here, I've got this one already set up with my screw driving bit. So this time around, this one, this is actually my older one. So I have number number one, number two. Number two is my newest one. Now these are fantastic drills. They sell them at Lowe's for about $85, $90. And absolutely great. Fits wonderful in the hand. I actually did a video about this drill. And it works really, really good. You got a speed adjuster here. See, right now I got set for slow speed. This one, number two, set up for the high speed. It'll do, I think, 1500 RPM, 1600 RPM at full speed. And it works really, really good. So, now, a little, little word of warning here, guys. When you get ready to do your hole saws, especially the larger ones, the little metal shavings are going to go everywhere. And if you're working on your workbench, you don't want these little shavings going all over the place. It's going to make a mess. They're going to get all over you. If you're going to do this out in your driveway or out in your yard, I really recommend not doing that because if 
you or your family likes to walk around barefoot in the yard or driveway or the hat around the house, you're going to pick up these metal shavings on your feet. And if you've got kids, it's really not going to be too good. If your wife gets a metal shaving on her foot, uh, you're going to have a bad day. So what I do is I do all my cutting inside of a cardboard box. Now this is a box, obviously, I got from U-Haul. This is one of those small boxes. And it works really, really good. And I actually put the box, the, uh, I actually have it lined with some paper in here to catch the metal shaving. And again, that's the only reason I have it taped up so it won't get scratched while we're drilling the holes. Because even though you have it lined in here, it will, but this will catch all your metal shavings. And for you guys that are doing coolers, um, if you decide to cut up a cooler, that foam is going to go everywhere, make a huge mess, and that box works really, really well for catching that foam. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this real quick, and I'm going to go ahead and raise the camera up so you can look down and see what I'm doing while I'm drilling the holes, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, you can see i got the camera as high as it can go. Now, before you decide to cut your holes, two really important things. Number one, safety glasses. And there's no more important safety tip than wear your safety glasses. So I'm going to put my safety glasses on. Also, you're going to need some ear protection. Now, if you're just doing one project, get you some cheap ear plugs. If you're going to be doing a lot of projects, I recommend getting some ear muffs like these. They're about $25 or $30 at the hardware store, and they work better than the ear plugs. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on. And we're going to go ahead and get ready. So get the drill ready. Hopefully I have a first battery. If not, we'll find out in a minute. Go ahead and lock it down. Go ahead and uh, find the hole there. Make sure you guys can see this. And go ahead and start. Let, let, let the saw blade do the work. So don't push down real hard. You're going to heat up your material. You're going to overheat your drill and the bit. So just give it light pressure and let the bit do the work. And it'll take about, oh, 20 or 30 seconds to go all the way through. clean hole that we have there. This battery is starting to die, so I'm going to go ahead and switch batteries out. Let me go ahead and get a fresh battery. That's the nice thing about having four batteries. Alright, let's go ahead and drill our second hole. And be careful because this metal is really, really hot right now. I can feel the heat coming off of it. So let's go ahead and line it up. And you see all the metal shavings going everywhere. Get it in there, and again, also when you hold your drill, don't cover up your vents either. The, the fans keep keeping that, that uh, drill cool. It puts a lot of strain on a drill. Now, if you have a drill press at home, this is a great project for a drill press. So, here we go. out a little bit. Now we're going to go to our inch and a quarter inch and we're going to drill our holes on top now. So get real careful here. This bit's a little bit warm. Not too bad. The box is actually warmer than the hole saw. We'll go ahead and thread that on. Locks into place. Set it over our holes here. Now, when you're drilling the tops, it's a little bit different because there's actually two layers of sheet metal that makes up the lid. That way, the lid is extra strong. So, 
you're gonna go through one layer you'll feel it cut through and you may have to pull out pull that off the top and take that little extra piece of metal out of there and then drill it through again so we'll find you'll see that when we start drilling here Okay, see I cut through the top layer, now I'm working on the second layer right now, right behind it. See how quickly that went through? Alright, let's go ahead and do the second one. Sometimes you gotta retighten it there. Just be careful, that bit's really hot. There we go. We're almost through the top first layer. You can really feel the heat radiating off this. Goodness, that thing's still getting loose on me there. It does that sometimes. Alright, there's the first one. See, we're almost through. That's what? Yeah, damn it, that thing is really acting up today. It does that sometimes. It's hard to get it really, really tight, especially on the keyless chucks. And there we go. Alright. Now I'm going to show you guys how to drill the holes for the switches. Now, we already have dimples, as you can see right here and I'm gonna go ahead and use those dimples as my center punch now I, I highly recommend getting a center punch because this really helps you drilling any kind of holes really precise you just put it on there spring loaded and it'll make a dimple just like that one and that's how I made the uh, I keep your drill bits from wandering around when you're drilling your initial holes so let's go ahead and switch over to our Linux make our holes for our switches Again, same procedure. Tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I mean by. I'm gonna go ahead and drill out my quarter inch holes real quick. So go ahead and put it right there on your mark. Take a little bit longer because it is going to the top of thicker metal. Just get even pressure. Come on now. Alright, there's the first one. Now we'll go ahead and do the second one. Go ahead and line it up, make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. Use that gentle little guy. It's a nice thing. Again, we're going through two layers of metal. You see all the shavings that are coming off this thing? That's why we're using this box to capture all those little metal shavings. You sure don't want that in your foot. Alright, there we go. Go ahead and switch out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take me a little brush here. Go ahead and get all these metal shavings off of here. Out of our way. We can see what we're doing. Go ahead and put our Linux in there. Make sure it's straight. Let's go ahead and drill the first hole. There we go. Just like butter. Go ahead and do the second one. 
lined up right here. Alright, there you go. And you can see what I mean by having a really good heavy duty drill. Like I said, I really like the Porter cable. I mean, it just fits in your hand like a glove. Works really, really well. Alright, let's go ahead and move this out of the way. First, let's go ahead and get all these metal shavings off of here. Nice thing about this box. Make sure you get them all the cracks and crevices, too. Alright, you can see all the metal shavings with that box box caught. Go ahead and put it down here. Take off my stuff here. So we'll go ahead and leave the camera like that for a minute. You can look down. Now I have a trash can right here next to my work So I'm going to go ahead and sweep off the rest of these. The other thing you want to do is go ahead and open your box up. It's going to be full of metal shavings. So uh, go ahead and take the lid back off. And here's the cool thing. You see this little disc that you end up with? Now the nice thing about this is you can use this as your template for your speakers next time. Just like I have the, the plastic one there. Now I don't need these because I've got the plastic one that I use. But you can see they're pretty much the same size, so it would, it would also work. So if you plan on doing more than one box, which is just addicting, you can go ahead and save these. If not, I'm going to go ahead and take some of the tape off of here since we're done drilling our holes. And this way I can go ahead and dump out all the shavings. And I'm go ahead and get what didn't get done. All right. Let me go ahead and um, move the camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, you can see you got the camera as high as it can go. Now, before you decide to cut your holes, two really important things. Number one, safety glasses. And there's no more important safety tip than wear your safety glasses. So I'm going to put my safety glasses on. Also, you're going to need some ear protection. Now, if you're just doing one project... Get you some cheap earplugs. If you're going to be doing a lot of projects, I recommend getting some earmuffs like these. They're about $25 or $30 at the hardware store, and they work better than the earplugs. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on, and we're going to go ahead and get ready. So get the drill ready. Hopefully I have a first battery. If not, we'll find out in a minute. Go ahead and lock it down. Go ahead and uh, find the hole there. Make sure you guys can see this. And go ahead and start. Let, let, let the solid blade do the work. So don't push down real hard. You're going to heat up your material. You're going to overheat your drill and the bit. So just give it light pressure and let the bit do the work. It'll take about... Oh, 20 or 30 seconds to go all the way through. All right, look at that nice clean hole that we have there. This battery is starting to die, so I'm going to go ahead and switch batteries out. Go ahead. Get a fresh battery. That's the nice thing about having four batteries. All right, let's go ahead and drill our second hole. And be careful because this metal is really, really hot right now. I can feel the heat coming off of it. So let's go ahead and line it up. And you see all the metal shavings going everywhere. Get it in there. And again, also when you hold your drill, don't cover up your vents. Either the, the fans can keep that, that uh, drill cool. It puts a lot of strain on a drill. Now, if you have a drill press at home, this is a great project for a drill press. So, here we go. Get 
our inch and a quarter inch and we're going to drill our holes on top now so it's real careful here this bit's a little bit warm not too bad the box is actually warmer than the hole saw we'll go ahead and thread that on locks into place and set it over our holes here now when you're drilling the tops, it's a little bit different because there's actually two layers of sheet metal that makes up the lid. That way the lid is extra strong. So you're going to go through one layer, you'll feel it cut through, and you may have to pull that, pull that off the top and take that little extra piece of metal out of there and then drill it through again. So we'll find, you'll see that when we start drilling here. See, I cut through the top layer. Now I'm working on the second layer right now, right behind it. See how quickly that went through? Alright, let's go ahead and do the second one. you gotta retighten it there. Just be careful that bit's really hot. There we go. We're almost through the top first layer. You can really feel the heat radiating off this. Goodness, that thing's still getting loose on me there. It does that sometimes. Alright, there's the first one. See, we're almost through. That's what? God damn it, that thing is really acting up today. It does that sometimes. It's hard to get it really, really tight, especially on these keyless chucks. And there we go. Alright. Now I'm going to show you guys how to drill the holes for the switches. Now, we already have dimples, as you can see right here and I'm going to go ahead and use those dimples as my center punch. Now I, I highly recommend getting a center punch because this really helps you drilling any kind of holes really precise. You just put it on there spring loaded and it'll make a dimple just like that one and that's how I made the uh, I keep your drill bits from wandering around when you're drilling your initial holes. So let's go ahead and switch over to our Linux. Make our holes for our switches. Again, same procedure. Tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I mean by... I'm going to go ahead and drill out my quarter inch holes. Real quick, so... Go ahead and put it right there on your mark. Take a little bit longer because it is... Go to the top, thicker metal. Just give it even pressure. Come on now. Alright, there's the first one. Now we'll go ahead and do the second one. Go ahead and line it up, make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. Use that gentle little guy. It's a nice thing. 
Again, we're going through two layers of metal. You see all the shavings that are coming off this thing? That's why we're using this box to capture all those little metal shavings. You sure don't want that in your foot. Alright, there we go. Go ahead and switch out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take me a little brush here. Go ahead and get all these metal shavings off of here out of our way. We can see what we're doing. Let's go ahead and put our Linux in there. Make sure it's straight. Let's go ahead and drill the first hole. Second one lined up right here. All right, there you go. You can see what I mean by having a really good heavy duty drill. Like I said, I really like the Porter cable, I mean, it just fits in your hand like a glove. Works really, really well. All right, let's go ahead and move this out of the way. First, let's go ahead and get all these metal shavings off of here. Nice thing about this box. Make sure you get them all the cracks and crevices, too. All right, you can see all the metal shavings that that box, box caught. Go ahead and put it down here. Take off my stuff here. So we'll go ahead and leave the camera like that for a minute. You can look down. Now I have a trash can right here next to my work spent. So I'm going to go ahead and sweep off the rest of these. The other thing you want to do is go ahead and open your box up. It's going to be full of metal shavings. So uh, go ahead and take the lid back off. And here's the cool thing. You see this little disc that you end up with? Now the nice thing about this is you can use this as your template for your speakers next time. Just like I have the, the plastic one there. Now I don't need these because I've got the plastic one that I use. But you can see they're pretty much the same size. So it would, it would also work. So if you plan on doing more than one box, which is just addicting, you can go ahead and save these. If not, I'm going to go ahead and take some of the tape off of here since we're done drilling our holes. And this way I can go ahead and dump out all the shavings. And I'm going to go ahead and get what didn't get done. All right. Let me go ahead and um, move the camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, you can see you got the camera as high as it can go. Now, before you decide to cut your holes, two really important things. Number one, safety glasses. And there's no more important safety tip than wear your safety glasses. So I'm going to put my safety glasses on. Also, you're going to need some ear protection. Now, if you're just doing one project, get you some cheap ear plugs. If you're going to be doing a lot of projects, I recommend getting some ear muffs like these. They're about $25 or $30 at the hardware store. And they work better than the earplugs. So I'm going to go ahead and put these on. And we're going to go ahead and get ready. So get the drill ready. Hopefully I have a first battery. If not, we'll find out in a minute. Go ahead and lock it down. Go ahead and uh, find the hole there. Make sure you guys can see this. And go ahead and start. Let, let, let the saw blade do the work. So don't push down real hard. You're going to heat up your material. You're going to overheat your drill and the bit. 
So just give it light pressure and let the bit do the work. It'll take about, oh, 20 or 30 seconds to go all the way through. <laughs> clean hole that we have there. This battery is starting to die, so I'm going to go ahead and switch batteries out. Let me go ahead and get a fresh battery. That's the nice thing about having four batteries. All right, let's go ahead and drill our second hole. And be careful because this metal is really, really hot right now. I can feel the heat coming off of it. So just go ahead and line it up. And you see all the metal shavings going everywhere. Get it in there, and again, also when you hold your drill, don't cover up your vents either. The, the fans keep keeping that, that uh, drill cool. They put a lot of strain on a drill. Now, if you have a drill press at home, this is a great project for a drill press. So, here we go. out a little bit. Now we're going to go to our inch and a quarter inch and we're going to drill our holes on top now. So, get real careful here. This bit's a little bit warm. Not too bad. The box is actually warmer than the hole saw. We'll go ahead and thread that on. Locks into place. Set it over our holes here. Now when you're drilling the tops, it's a little bit different because there's actually two layers of sheet metal that makes up the lid. That way the lid is extra strong. So you're going to go through one layer, you'll feel it cut through, and you may have to pull that, pull that off the top and take that little extra piece of metal out of there and then drill it through again. So we'll find, you'll see that when we start drilling here. See, I cut through the top layer. Now I'm working on the second layer right now, right behind it. See how quickly that went through? All right, let's go ahead and do the second one. Sometimes you gotta retighten it there. Just be careful, that bit's really hot. There we go. We're almost through the top first layer. You can really feel the heat radiating off this. Goodness, that thing's still getting loose on me there. It does that sometimes. Alright, there's the first one. See, we're almost through. That's what? Yeah, damn it, that thing is really acting up today. It does that sometimes. It's hard to get it really, really tight, especially on these keyless chucks. And there we go. Alright. Now I'm going to show you guys how to drill the holes for the switches. Now, we already have dimples, as you can see right here and I'm going to go ahead and use those dimples as my center punch. Now I, I highly recommend getting a center punch 
because this really helps you drilling any kind of holes really precise. You just put it on there, spring loaded, and it'll make a dimple just like that one. And that's how I made the, uh, I keep your drill bits from wandering around when you're drilling your initial holes. So let's go ahead and switch over to our Linux. Make our holes for our switches. Again, same procedure. Tell you what, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I mean by. I'm gonna go ahead and drill out my quarter inch holes real quick. So go ahead and put it right there on your mark. Take a little bit longer because it is going to the top thicker metal. Just get even pressure. Come on now. Alright, there's the first one. Now we'll go ahead and do the second one. Go ahead and line it up, make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. Use that gentle little guy. It's a nice thing. Again, we're going through two layers of metal. You see all the shavings that are coming off this thing? That's why we're using this box to capture all those little metal shavings. You sure don't want that in your foot. Alright, there we go. Go ahead and switch out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take me a little brush here. Go ahead and get all these metal shavings off of here. Out of our way. We can see what we're doing. Go ahead and put our Linux in there. Make sure it's straight. Let's go ahead and drill the first hole. There we go. Just like butter. Go ahead and do the second one. Lined up right here. All right, there you go. And you can see what I mean by having a really good heavy duty drill. Like I said, I really like the Porter cable. I mean, it just fits in your hand like a glove. Works really, really well. All right, let's go ahead and move this out of the way. First, let's go ahead and get all these metal shavings off of here. Nice thing about this box. Make sure you get them all the cracks and crevices, too. All right, you can see all the metal shavings that that box, box caught. Go ahead and put it down here. Take off my stuff here. So we'll go ahead and leave the camera like that for a minute. You can look down. Now I have a trash can right here next to my workbench, so I'm going to go ahead and sweep off the rest of these. The other thing you want to do is go ahead and open your box up. It's going to be full of metal shavings. So go ahead and take the lid back off. And here's the cool thing. You see this little disc that you end up with? Now the nice thing about this is you can use this as your template for your speakers next time. Just like I have the, the plastic one there. Now I don't need these because I've got the plastic one that I use. But you can see they're pretty much the same size. So it would, it would also work. So if you plan on doing more than one box, which is just addicting, you can go ahead and save these. If not, I'm going to go ahead and take some of the tape off of here since we're done drilling our holes. And this way I can go ahead and dump out all the shavings. And I'm go ahead and get what didn't get done. All right. 
Let me go ahead and um, move the camera, and I'll be right back. Okay, everybody. Now you can see once I peel the tape off here, what nice holes we have. And again, the, the finish is really nice because we have the tape covering it up. Now, if you're going to tape off your box, please don't use regular masking tape like this right here because it might leave a little residue behind. You want to use painter's tape. It's uh, a little bit more expensive than the masking tape, but you're going to get a much, much better result. So, you know, it's, it's time to save money, but this is not one of them. You want to do a quality job, you're going to have to spend the the money here. So let me go ahead and get this tape peeled off. You can see how nice the finish is because we had it all taped off and covered up. I'll get to the tape off the back in a minute. And you can see we'll go ahead and put our our lid back on because you want to go ahead and drill all your holes before you start doing any kind of a assembly. And let me go ahead and that switch right there to show you see how nice and neat that hole is right there for that switch it's absolutely perfect now the reason I have the tape right here to hold up the handle is I'm getting ready to paint the lid and I want the paint to get all the way through now we're gonna wrap the handle anyway so even if that tape gets paint on it that's okay because we're gonna go ahead and wrap all that up so you're never you're never gonna see that tape but you can see our holes are nice and clean uh, these four dots rec rep uh, represent the uh, plate that we have right here. Now, it's not going to be blue. It's just an extra one I have. But that marks the holes there that I'm going to drill out with a small bit before I even the painting. And you can see how nice and clean the holes are. Now, again, you can do this with a jigsaw. I used to do it with a jigsaw. But you're not going to get results like this with a jigsaw unless you're just really, really good. But one thing I've noticed is when I'm using the jigsaw, I get a lot of pain in my forearm and everything because you're constantly having to hold a lot of pressure down. Where with your hole saw, you know, you can see the hole saw does all the work. Makes a perfect hole every time exactly where you want it. it looks really, really good. Again, I want this finished. Um, this box is going to be a special box I'm working on. So I'm not going to get a lot of details on it right now. But um, this, this project will be finished ne uh, next Saturday. You'll see it. Or maybe a week after that. I'm not sure. I got I got two projects going on right now. I've got this one, which is going to be red and black, and I've got another one coming up, ladies and gentlemen, which is going to be really nice. Oh, and I've got the hat of the boys and girls. Like see Duke. Uh, Duke was in the room. I guess he must have got scared from all the drilling. But I promise Duke will be in the next video for sure. He uh, he probably got kind of nervous. He doesn't like loud noises. He kind of Duke's kind of jumpy. As big as a cat as he is, he's, he's kind of jumpy. But anyway, I, I hope um, I answered your questions here about the different types of drill bits. Oh, well, I should say the hole saws that you see me use. Um, they're a really good investment, uh, especially if you're going to do more than one. Now, if you're just going to do one, or you're doing your first one, and you just want to use your jigsaw, that's fine. Now, you don't have to have a big fancy jigsaw like this one either. Uh, this is actually part of my business, so I, I, I went ahead and invested in some very expensive tools. One thing I did do is I did cover the bottom plate here with Velcro, the soft side of the Velcro, to minimize the scratching from the metal plate. But what I did was, and I, I still got it around here somewhere, I went to the pawn shop and I bought a jigsaw for $15 to plug in the wall. And it worked really, really good. The only reason I went with cordless is because I used to do this outside, and I went ahead and wanted a cordless once I could do all my cutting outside, especially when I was cutting the cooters because I didn't have the big hole saw yet for the six and a half inch coolers and coolers make such a big mess. There's Duke. Come on Duke. Everybody wants to see you. Come on. Kitty, kitty, kitty. He's over here. Hopefully we get to see Duke. But anyway everybody, I uh, hope hope this helped. You uh, learn about jigsaws and drills. Again, you know, get you a good cordless drill. Spend the money, like I said, porter cable, half inch, 20 volt drill, uh, lithium ion drill for less than $100. Feels absolutely so fantastic in your hand. It feels like you're shaking somebody's hand. It's just, it's, it fits like a glove. I really love it. I'm just a fan of Porter Cable. And I know you guys out there love DeWalt 
And I like DeWalt too. I mean, I love their tools, obviously. It's just DeWalt was a little bit out of my price range when I first started. Because um, you're looking at at least $150, maybe more, for a half-inch DeWalt cordless drill. But, um, well, come on, Duke. He's over here talking. But I just, I, I found the Porter cable. I was going to go with Craftsman, but I just really didn't like the feel of Craftsman. I had Craftsman in the past. I, I'm really disappointed in Craftsman's quality. They're not really made in America anymore. But I just love Porter cable, and I'm trying to get the whole Porter cable line. That, that's my goal. But let's see if we can get Duke over here for just a minute before we say goodbye. There you go, Duke. Say hi. Yeah, this is your uh, first time seeing my channel. Uh, this is Duke. And for you subscribers and everybody else who knows my channel, you know Duke. <laughs> Duke is uh, a cat that I've had for a long time. I got him when he was three weeks old. He's now eight years old. And he's my buddy. He's my best friend. And he's just, uh, he's an awesome cat. He really is. He's super awesome. And he loves the camera. So Duke is in most of my videos. I'd say about 90% of my videos. Duke is in. And I had to make sure I brought Duke out because I, I hear from you guys when Duke's not in the video. Everybody wants to know if Duke's okay. Duke is fine. <laughs> you can see he's doing really, really good. It's uh, Sunday afternoon, 5 o'clock. Been a really busy day. And uh, Duke's having a good time. He's, he's eating ready to eat. Duke eats at 6 o'clock. That's when he gets a can of canned food. He eats dry food the rest of the day. But he gets treats in the morning. And then he gets canned food in the evening, so it'll be telling me it's dinner time in about an hour. So I'm going to go ahead and get this video, uh, start editing, and I'm hoping to have it uploaded tonight so you guys can uh, see the information. And I hope it answers the questions for those of you that ask questions on the I Love All Things Radio group. And if you want to learn how to build yourself, or if you're a builder yourself especially, we would love to have you help us answer questions. It's a great place to show off your work. Uh, exchange ideas and again if you've never built a box before and you're interested in learning how to build your own we would love to help you and if you're interested in buying one uh, Christmas is coming up and uh, like this one here I'm working on right now it's kind of a Christmas present for somebody but I'm keeping that a secret for right now and I would love to build you one or build one of your family members one I built one for a veteran oh probably a month or two ago and he absolutely loves it it was a regular army box and you can see the video on there and uh, I've built them for people around the country. They all seem very, very happy with them. I know I got a couple of them that are coming up over on the one year mark. I know the zombie box that's sent to Ohio uh, was a Christmas present last year for somebody. They love it. So I've got a lot of great projects coming on, coming up. So thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much to my subscribers. I've almost got 500 subscribers, which makes me so happy. I started with six. <laughs> And I never in my wildest dreams thought I'd have so many. So thank you guys so much for watching my channel. Thank you for all the very kind words that you gave the guys. And thanks for all the shout-outs to Duke. <laughs> I promise, I, I say hi to Duke for all you guys out there that say hi, hi little Duke. He, he knows y'all are out there. And uh, one day I might actually get some t-shirts with Duke's picture on it. I don't know. But I think when I hit 100, 500 subscribers, I might do a special video. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet. I might even do a giveaway. Who knows? So, thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you for subscribing to my channel. Thank you for being a fan of Duke and myself, and we'll see you next week with more stuff. Thanks for watching.